Welcome to this Cinema 4D tutorial. I'm Jesse, and this is going to be a quick tutorial. I'm just going to show you how to add fog to a scene in Cinema 4D. Uh, fog is kind of the one thing that isn't built into the program, and so I'm using a plugin, which, fortunately for us, is entirely free. I, I found it with just a very quick Google search. I, I, I think I just Googled Cinema 4D Fog. And what I found was this pack called CS Tools, and I'll put a link to the download for the CS Tools in the comment section of this video. And what these tools are is just tons of nice uh, plugins for Cinema 4D. You can see all of them right here with a few examples and a little bit of documentation. And this works for both Mac and PC because each one of the plugins, so to speak, is just its own Cinema 4D file. So I just used CS Fog. I double clicked it and this is what we get. We get kind of these, if I click it, we get these two smaller circles and this one bigger circle. And just for the purpose of being able to see this, I'm going to create a floor, a cube, and I'm going to duplicate this cube and pull it kind of further back just so we can see the fog effect actually in action. All right, so now let's go back to the fog. And you'll notice that the fog icon is a null object and it has this little plus icon next to it. If you open it up, you get a lot of sub things, uh, like little circles and all these other settings. Don't worry about any of those. All that you need to play around with is right under fog, and it's down here in the user data, user data in the attributes, excuse me. So let's get started. I'm just going to zoom way out here and render this so you can see what it looks like. And we see kind of, we see our floor and the kind of hazy, bluish color. Now don't worry about the color, we can change that later. But for right now we can see that there's a fog, it's got this outer limit, and it kind of curves up upwards to this kind of top. So the first setting that we have is size. Size is just the overall size of the fog. So if I made it really small like this, I want to encompass the other cube. So I'm going to make it significantly larger. You can see it's really big now. Now I'm actually inside the fog with my camera. And so now let's kind of zoom in a little bit. Now if I render it, we still don't really see much of the fog. We see the background way back here. It's kind of a hazy, but in the foreground there's not much fog at all. I'll just zoom in a little more just to get a really good effect later. So you can see the cube back here is pretty much uh, in the same quality of visibility as the cube in the front. So now uh, let's take down the size so we can just see what we're doing. We've got the height, and this is exactly what you think, just the height of the fog. So we've got these two smaller circles. This height tab controls the smaller circles. So if I want to make the fog really tall versus really short, I, oops, that's thickness. I'm just going to keep it around here for now. That should be good. I don't need something that's too tall. I'm, and I'm going to increase the size in a moment. The thickness, here so we can see it determines how thick the fog is. So right now we can tell that the fog is very thin. We can clearly see the cube in the background and we can easily see the cube in the foreground. If I decrease the thickness, nothing will change, but you'll notice the haze in the background gets a lot thinner. If I increase it, and I noticed around 95% will make this work because these two cubes are pretty close to each other. And now if I render it, you can really see that this cube is starting to fall off. So let's just kind of maybe jump to 97 and See, yeah, that, that kind of works. It's kind of starting to fall away into the bluish haze. And part of the reason that it's not actually falling into the haze too well is because the cube is pretty close to my cube, to my original cube. So, whoops, let's just delete this one and go back here. And now you should be able to see the effect a lot clearer. So this cube is hardly visible at all and if I hide fog from the rendering, you can see here the cube is perfectly visible. And here it isn't at all. And the last thing is the brightness. So if I take it all the way down, you can guess the fog is going to be black. And it's kind of a cool effect. It gets cooler if you add a light. So if I go all the way up to brightness, it's just very, very bright. And before I add a light, which is one other thing I'm going to do, I just want to show you the last thing, color. You can guess what that is. If we want kind of a bloody fog, nice and 
I, I feel like I'm kind of in a video game with this kind of effect, but for what I'm going to use, I'm just going to use kind of a grayish color and maybe up the brightness a little bit. And there we go. That's kind of a realistic fog. I mean, real life fog is probably a little wider than this, probably around up here, but it all depends on other atmosphere qualities, what color it actually is. So now that we have the fog, let's add a light. And I'm doing this because the light itself doesn't actually affect the fog. So the fog isn't like a particle system. So if I render right now, we have the fog in the background and the light in the foreground, and the light doesn't change anything. So if I add area uh, for shadow, you don't see the light in the fog. If you want to see the light, you still have to create volumetric or kind of a visible light. And if I made this really kind of big, it would just kind of look strange for it now. So that's pretty much how you create the fog. Um, you can add it just to basically to any scene. And I, I might, for the cover picture of this, I might just take one of my low poly scenes that I modeled for previous cover picture and add the fog over it, just so that you can kind of see the effect of the fog quality to a normal scene. Anyway, shorter tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you find use for these CS tools. I'll post a link below.